the most important guitar lesson that I ever had. So you may remember I've mentioned on a couple of my other videos that I had a guitar lesson which changed the way I looked at playing the guitar. So I want to take you through what I learned. So the guy's name is Mike. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. So I went around for a lesson and I said, I'm a bit stuck, I need some inspiration. He said, okay, go to the second position and I want you to play every major scale and every minor scale in the second position. And instantly it transformed what I thought I knew about guitar because it was, I was just stuck straight away. I could play some of them, but some of them I really had to think about. So um, having done that and changed the way I looked at playing the guitar, because I've never really played in positions before, he gave me a little tool that will help you, that certainly helped me, to learn all of the different positions and all of the different scales, arpeggios, um, and chords and stuff like that. So this is what I did. So for this lesson, you'll need a piece of paper and a pen. And what you need to do, first of all, is draw yourself a grid. So on your grid, you should have 12 squares. Obviously yours can be a lot neater than mine. So the next thing you need to do in your grid is write all of the keys. So there's 12 keys and we're gonna write them all in, but don't write them all in sequence. You need to write them in randomly and that'll become apparent in a minute. I'm actually going to change two of these. Because I don't want consecutive keys next to each other. And the reason you don't is because when we're practicing, you'll see why, because it's going to be, it will be too easy for you to just move everything up a semitone and not have to think about what you're doing. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take this grid and I'm going to show you how to use it to practice and learn everything that you need to learn in terms of scales and positions. So for the sake of this lesson, we're going to play on the fifth position or we're going to start on the fifth position. So in order to do this, you will need to know the notes that are in every key. And that's pretty straightforward. You can use the internet and just print it up, print it off or use an iPad or an iPhone or something, but you need to know what notes are in this in each of the keys. So let's start off with F sharp. So fifth position, A isn't in the key of F sharp. So we need to create a rule. So we can create a rule where we can either use fifth, fourth or sixth note as your starting point. Now you don't have to have that rule, you can create your own rule, you can say I can only play above that note. So you may want to use any of that. You may say I can only play backwards. So create your own rules in terms of how you're going to do this. Those four frets will be your natural position there. You can play five frets, whatever you want to do. But we're going to start here in the fifth position. So F sharp major so the first note after here that's in the key of f sharp major is here a sharp so let's play an f sharp major scale in this position first note is here because that's the first note in the scale okay so next we're going to play a c major scale And 
the reason that we're starting there is because A, B, C, D, E, F, G and A are all in the C major. Etc. So an E major. A G major. So you get the picture, we're going through each of the scales in that position. If we can start the scale on an A, because that scale contains an A, then we can use that note. If we can't start on that note, we can either start above it or below it. So that's the first thing, play all your major scales in that one position. So once we've played all of our major scales in this position, we're now going to move on to minor scales. Now you don't have to go across the way that I've done. You can play down, you can play left, right to left, you can play upwards, you know, you can mix it around to make it more interesting so that you're not playing the same patterns all the time. Um, but for the sake of this, we're just gonna keep going across. So next one, we're gonna play an F sharp minor scale. Next, we're going to play a C minor scale. Now we're going to play an E minor scale. So you get the picture. So once you've done your major scales and your minor scales, we're going to look at some arpeggios. So let's have a look at those now. So first of all, F sharp major arpeggio. Now the reason I'm starting here and not here is because we don't always want to start on the root note and you also need to be able to play the rest of the um, arpeggio wherever you happen to be. So now we're going to play a C major arpeggio. E major arpeggio. Come down there as well if you want that. So once you've played through all of your major arpeggios, you're then going to play through your minor arpeggios and your diminished arpeggios. Then we're going to play all our sevenths. So major seven, minor seven, dominant seven, and diminished seven arpeggios. So just in that one position, that fifth fret position, unless you know your fretboard and your keys and scales really, really well. That could keep you occupied for a couple of hours. Then, next time you practice, let's say we're gonna start in the ninth position. So you can do exactly the same thing. So you're gonna start with your F major scale. And then you're gonna go through to C major. play through all of your different scales, your keys, your arpeggios, all in that position. And next time you come to pick up your guitar, let's start down here. And, and over the course, if you do this every day, every week, over the course of a few months, your knowledge and your ability to just pick out an arpeggio or a scale or a key somewhere on the guitar will go up dramatically. So that was probably the most important guitar lesson I ever had and I hope that helps you to understand and master the fretboard a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and see you soon.